Good morning and good Shabbos, everyone. You know, there's a story told that Arafat once heard that there was this great rabbi who could foresee the future. So Arafat went to see this great rabbi and he said to him, I hear you could see the future. Tell me, what day am I going to die on? So Arafat said to, uh, the rabbi said to Arafat, I can't see exactly which day it's going to be, but I could see that you're going to die on a great Jewish holiday. He said, really, which holiday is it going to be? He said, whatever day you die on is going to be a great Jewish holiday. You know, we Jews have a lot of holidays. Why? Because we had a lot of enemies. And every time another enemy was destroyed, we have another celebration, another holiday. Next week we have Purim. It celebrates the defeat of Haman. And, you know, the story of this guy, he said, I'm becoming an atheist. He went off to become an atheist. And then uh, they see him back in shul. They say, what happened? I thought you became an atheist. He said, I gave it up. They said, why? He said, because they don't have any holidays. You know, all, all Jewish holidays, they say, could be described in nine words. They tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. So this Shabbat is Shabbat Zachar. We remember Amalek, who was the first one who tried to destroy the Jewish people. And Haman was a descendant of Amalek. So on the Shabbat before Purim, we take out two Torahs and we read a special reading where the Torah says, Remember Amalek, and that in every generation there's a war, a battle against the Amalek of that generation. In our generation, it was, in the previous generation, it was Hitler, and in today's generation, it's Iran and the other countries that want to destroy Israel. There's always going to be a descendant of Amalek in the world that is going to try to destroy the Jewish people. And therefore, the war and the battle is always ongoing. Now there's an interesting medrash. The medrash says that when the Jewish people were given the commandment, Zachor, remember what Amalek did to you, the Jewish people said to Moshe, how could we remember what Amalek did when there's another commandment, the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments says, Zachor at Yom HaShabbat, remember the day of Shabbat. So how could it be Zachor at Amalek if there's Zachor at Shabbat? How could you remember Amalek if you remember Shabbat? And the medrash says that Moshe responded to the Jews and said, there's two cups. One is a cup of wine, one is a cup of vinegar. They're both cups, but one is wine as one is vinegar. And the question is, what was the question that the Jews had in the first place? Why can't there be two separate things to remember? Every day we have to remember lots of things. Some things are good things, some things are bad things. Why is it a contradiction? What was the question that the Jews were asking? Because it says, remember Shabbat, you can't remember a Malik. What does one have to do with the other? And what was the answer of Moshe? There's a cup of wine and there's a cup of vinegar. And so the commentaries explain as follows. What Mo- the Jews were saying to Moshe Rabbeinu was, if we remember the day of Shabbat, this is Shabbat Zachor, Shabbat means that God made the world, everything was created by God in six days, and God rested in the seventh day. So why is there evil in the world? If God made the world, why did He make the world with evil? If there's no God, okay, there's evil. But if God made this world, why did He make evil? And evil people in the world. Why do we have to have a Malik in the first place? As you know, the word evil is live backwards. If you spell live backwards, if you live backwards, it's evil. Why did God make that? So Moshe Benu says to the Jewish people, what you have to understand is like this. There are two cups. One is wine as one is vinegar. Where does the vinegar come from? It comes from the wine. God made every person like a beautiful cup of wine. Every person was made with goodness, with righteousness, with love, with a beautiful soul in the image of God. It's a rich tasting wine. But some people take their wine and they turn it into vinegar. God didn't make the evil. They chose to become evil. They chose to take their wine and allow it to become vinegar. And therefore we have to remember this Shabbat, that the way God made the world rich and beautiful with wine. Every person has a beautiful cup of wine, tasty wine, different types of wine. Everyone has their own flavor, but everyone's wine. But some people choose to become vinegar because God gave us free choice. And therefore remember to blot out the memory of Amalek because you must eradicate evil from the world and you have to realize that there are always going to be people who are going to make that choice to be evil and therefore there's always going to be evil in the world and you always have to fight against that evil to not allow the forces of evil of darkness to overtake the forces of good and the forces of light in the world. And so when people say, why is there evil in the world? God gave us free choice. God doesn't want us to be evil. Unfortunately, people choose sometimes to become evil. Just last night in Israel, they sent missiles from Gaza, the terrorists sent missiles, Hamas, from Gaza into Tel Aviv. Why would a sane, rational person 
send a missile on a populated area like Tel Aviv is like sending a missile into Manhattan, God forbid, right? And the world expects us to be quiet? How can we allow men, women, and children to be killed with missiles sent in from Gaza? So of course we have to defend ourselves. We have to fight against Amalek. And Amalek is Hamas and all the other enemies of Israel who indiscriminately just want to destroy the Jews. This is pure evil. And we have to stop justifying it and rationalizing and explaining. We have to understand their economic situation. The evil is evil. It has nothing to do with economics. It has nothing to do with anything else but pure evil. The desire to kill men, women and children has nothing to do with politics. It's evil. And the Torah says, see it for what it is and destroy it. There's a story told about a scorpion who was once at a lake. And he wanted to get across the lake, the river. He couldn't get across. So he sees us, a beautiful swan. So he goes over to the swan and says, Can I get a ride on your back across the river? And the swan says, Are you crazy? I'm crazy. I'm going to take you on. You'll bite me and I'll die. I'm not going to take a scorpion on my back. So the scorpion says to the swan, Listen, I don't know how to swim. If I bite you in the middle of the river and you go down, I go down with you and I drown with you. So of course I'm never going to bite you because I would be jeopardizing my own life. Sounded pretty rational to the swan. So the swan said, okay, you're right, get on my back. Halfway through the river, the scorpion goes, <laughs> gives him a big bite. And the poor swan feels the poison of the scorpion and he starts to lose his strength and he starts to drown. And he turns to the scorpion and says, why did you kill me? You're killing yourself too. What are you doing? And the scorpion says, at the end of the day, I'm still a scorpion. And that's what scorpions do. Human beings are not scorpions. They have free will. But unfortunately, some people have chosen to become evil. And this is their nature. And when Hamas sends missiles into, uh, into Israel, they know they're going to pay a price. And they know they're going to bring havoc and destruction on themselves and their own people. Because Israel will not remain silent. Why are you doing things that are going to destroy your own life and your own families? But that's the nature of evil. Sometimes evil is not rational. The problem is when we start rationalizing it and making excuses for it. We have to understand that God told us there's always going to be Amaleks in the world because from all the billions of people, some people are going to choose to be evil. That's a fact of life. It comes with free choice. But we have the good people have to stand together as one and stand up to it. And that's the only way we could curb and curtail and contain anti-Semitism.